Our first speaker this evening, um, I'm delighted to say, is Louise Reagan, who's the National Officer Membership Inequality from the National Education Union. Um, I'll mention now as well the budget, budget day protests, um, which are taking place on the 15th of March. And there is an open letter to the trade union movement, which has been coordinated partly by the NEU. We'll put the details of that in, in the chat. So welcome, Louise, and over to you. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you for those two very uh, informative contributions and solidarity to all workers out there that are taking action at the moment because the NEU stands in solidarity with all workers um, that are taking action. And there are many, and as you have said, there are many reasons why. Um, just a bit of brief sort of history. I mean, we've um, we've come out of COVID, although we're still living with COVID, but uh, the, the National Education Union did a huge amount of work during COVID, supporting our members, our communities, our children and young people. Um, and I think the government got very irritated with us. And uh, we think we did a really good job doing the best that we could to ensure that children and young people uh, were taught um, during that period, either online or in schools for those of key workers. And I think our members really expected that their hard work, their commitment, and many of our members lost their lives during COVID, and we have to remember that, as did many workers. Um, we thought the government would, you know, would reward that and would think, you know, these are the people that have got us through to this point, and we need to respect that and we need to value what they did. But instead, the government have decided, as always, that they'll go on the offensive and attack workers as they continually do. So we um, have had lots of conversations and obviously we balloted our members. We're a huge union, over 450,000 members. Um, that has increased significantly, I have to say, during the action we, that we have taken. Um, but we, we started our ballot, we did a very extensive consultative ballot to make sure because of the anti-trade union laws that exist. And I would hope that any government coming forward would uh, think that it was perfectly reasonable to remove those anti-trade union laws, but that doesn't seem to be the case from any government at the moment. Uh, but we did a consult, you know, extensive exercise to make sure we'd got up-to-date data so that um, when we went to a formal ballot, we would be in the best position possible. We knew that we were gonna be watched very closely. And I think the government genuinely thought we would fail. I think we worked extensively and obviously we had uh, a resounding win over 53% of members in England, over 58% of main members in Wales uh, turnout, which is hard to achieve, but which we did achieve. And uh, we had our first day of national action on the 1st of February, jointly with a number of other unions. It was an amazing day. I have to say for us as a union, there were huge amounts of young members there who've never taken action before, who actually realised, you know, the purpose of the union and the importance of taking action. Um, for people that aren't aware, you know, this is an th this dispute is over pay because there are very tight limitations around the anti-trade union laws. So that's what we're allowed to ballot about. Teachers over the past 13 years have faced a 23% pay cut, support staff 27% pay cut. So we see that it's an important factor for us. But also what we know is that all of the pay awards that we get are never funded. So everything that we get as pay awards comes out of school budgets. So that has a massive impact on the children and young people that we teach and our ability to do the things that we want to do. Um, so we won that ballot. We had an amazing first day of strike, strike action. We're now rolling out regional action over this week. Um, we've got a regional day coming up on Wednesday, uh, over next week, regional day coming up next Wednesday in the East Midlands. People are really up for this. Young people turned out in droves actually to our recent meetings. They're very keen to take part. They, they wanna hold the government to account. They don't believe that the government is willing to do anything. So whilst we've had some uh, you know, attempts by the government to ask us to call off the strike action, 
I don't think that is something that we would want to do as a union. We want to work with our members unless there's a realistic uh, offer on the table. We wouldn't want to look at that. Uh, and then we have got two days of national action on the 15th and 16th of March. Uh, 15th of March, our intention is to take as many of our members from across the country down to London to have a huge national day of action around the budget uh, and to challenge the government over the, one, the lack of pay awards for teachers uh, and, and support staff, the lack of funding for our schools, our children, our young people, because that's what we see on a daily basis and what we're dealing with. Um, and also to say that anything that they do award us has to be funded. And I think that is a key point for us as a union, that whatever the whatever we are offered by government, there has it has to be funded by the government because anything that isn't funded will take money out of our school budgets, which are already struggling. And just a couple of final things, really, because I'm aware of time. The government continues to fail to reach recruitment targets. They rarely talk about this. You know, so every year for the past uh, at least five, they failed to reach their recruitment targets and teachers are leaving in their droves. So a third of teachers go within the first five years. It's an absolute waste of taxpayers' money. The money we invest in training uh, educators is then gone because of the workload and the lack of pay. Um, and the final thing I'll say is this. You mentioned the minimum service levels. Well, what is that in a school? What is a minimum service level? Yeah. Is, how does that work? Is it every child has to have a place? Well, then nobody can take strike ever. Um, so the minimum service levels has to be challenged. We have to challenge that as trade unions. We have to stand together. My view is this, you know, the public sector is being attacked by this government and we have a duty to stand by it, to stand in solidarity with each other, to fight back against what this government is doing and to con continue to speak out about the attacks on our services. And the more that we do collectively, the more we educate the public and talk to them, the better that will be. And that is what we as a union are committed to doing. So we have lots of information for parents and carers. We have lots of in information for the public. We'll be out on the streets next week talking to those people and saying we're doing this because we're, we want investment in education. We want investment in our children and young people. And the only way to improve that is by the government changing their strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Louise. It's shocking to hear that statistic about a third of teachers leaving within the first five years. I think we've got similar data in the NHS. I was hearing about midwives and the proportion of midwives that leave very quickly after joining because the pressure is just too great. Um, well, thank and thank you to all the teaching staff. I think it's one of the most important professions, and it's just absolutely shocking that their pay has been um, cut in real terms so savagely over recent years. So thank you very much, um, Louise.